situation, it just ceases to exist. When you walk into the room, the dead began to rise, cause there's a resurrection life yeah. in all you do. your faith. Amen. 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 Somebody say I'm accepted. Amen. Well, can we have fun tonight? It's yeah. Thursday night. Can some of y'all have work tomorrow? Uh, Kelly, Heather, you came from Moore and, and other friends, uh, Andrew and Sherry, they came from Ada and, and JJ. Everybody say, hey, JJ. Hey, JJ. Hey, JJ. Hey, JJ. She is a partner with the ministry. She's over up in Glenpool and she emailed, hey, are you going to be in the area? And so she is here tonight. And we're just going to have fun. But I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet if you don't mind. Uh, let's go to uh, Andrew. I'm trying to think. I think it's the 12th track on there. I want you to roam around. Show some people your teeth. Keep them in your head. Just smile. Amen. Don't be pulling them out and doing all the things. Amen. But I want you to find somebody, smile at them, hug them, and just tell them I'm getting the heart of God in my mind. Tell them that with a smile on your face. And go ahead, Andrew. Go ahead and roam around and tell somebody that. Find somebody you don't know and introduce yourself. Forget the heart of God. Now it seems done. I know you even know that. Oh, listen, you made me do You took all the shame and had all the screen. And now I finally know who you made me to be. You're so good. You're so good. You're so good. Jesus, you're so good. We're going to say it again. You're so good. You're so good. You're so good. 
in church, 63 years old, been in this all my life, and we thought if you didn't get out of church at 11 or 12 or 1, you just didn't yield to the Holy Spirit, but we're growing up, amen? We're growing up. I believe when you go to church, you worship. Somebody say worship. Understand, you cannot be taught deeper than you worship. So you can say, I love God, come to church, but if you don't get involved in worship, you're not going to hear the Word. That's right. He that has an ear, let him hear. You may hear it physically, but you'll never receive it spiritually. Right. Because praise demands self to die. Come on. Amen. And self, somebody say self. Self is the only pre-emergent that will hinder the seed of the Spirit. So... That's the reason we do worship, and Kelly and Heather and, and Lori and all of them did such a great job tonight. On the table in the back, there is some product, the brand new music CD. Um, it's got the songs on it we did tonight. A book on uncommon life, the anecdote of life and health, uh, based on the communion with Christ in a great mentality. And then the, the book... On what's love got to do with it. I'm a grace teacher. I'm greasy grace. You can't lose your salvation. That, and I have been disowned by many because I teach that. Because as a preacher, how can you control the people unless you scare them with hell? And I am a preacher's kid. Amen. But uh, many of my grace friends think, well, we're free from the law. Yes, we are. But the Mosaic law. The Ten Commandments are different from the Mosaic Law. The Ten Commandments were not given after a rebellion. They were given during it. Oh my God. The first five commandments is how to love God. The last five is how to love your neighbor in a New Testament mentality. How to understand to show God. No man has seen God unless 
love has been revealed. Yeah. Amen. 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 You don't show God with a bumper sticker and a t-shirt. You show Him with loving. Amen. And the book on Awaken to Love, which you don't need. <laughs> you want some more? Hey, I'm, I love them. I'm just messing with them. I knew they was going to do it. But Awaken to Love. Behold, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. We have limited that to an elementary understanding of a rapture. But to be raptured means to be caught up. Amen. Anytime you start thinking above your problem, you have experienced a rapture. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Amen. <laughs> Come on now. Come on now. And so, what what does it mean to wake up? Because there's really only uh, a few different types of people on the planet. It's those who are dead in Christ, alive in Christ, and asleep in Christ. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You didn't... See, I used to testify I got saved in May of 1976. That was my understanding. I didn't get saved in 1976. I woke up in 1976. He saved me 2017 years ago. I just woke up to it. You didn't get healed last year. You woke up to it. My people are destroyed from a lack of knowledge. What does it mean? A lack, what's it mean to be destroyed by a lack of knowledge? 1 Corinthians 15.34 Awake to righteousness and sin not. For some have yet to understand. You are asleep in Christ if you do not understand what He did, not just for you, but as you. Yeah. Jesus yeah. didn't die for you. He died as That's you. Right. right. Amen? And so, anyway, there's some uh, CD series back there. One on the promised man conquering the seven enemies of the mind. The Old Testament is typology, symbolism, spiritual allegories. You have to look at it hermeneutically and homiletically to understand it according to the New Testament. But when God told Moses, Behold, I'm going to bring my people out of Egypt. Somebody say, Sam. I'm yeah. going to bring you out of a fallen man mentality into the place of the Canaanites, Hittites, Hivites, Amorites, Perizzites, Jebusites, Girgashites. There were seven mentalities they had to conquer in order to walk as the promised man. In the Old Testament, it was a promised land. In the New Testament, it is a promised man. Amen. Yeah. Okay. How do I get to the place I'm walking as Christ in the earth? This series will help you. And then another one back there on radical Christianity. In the day you eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, in that day you will surely die. To die is not physically... Hello? I don't know how old Adam was. But from the moment he ate of the knowledge who he wasn't, it took him 925, 935 years to die. So I don't know how old he was. It just took him that long to die. We're getting better. Average age of a male is 77, 78. <laughs> that dude ate the fruit and it took him 900, almost 1,000 years to figure it out. He was a goner. Amen. My people are destroyed from a lack of knowledge. Amen. Go to a church that teaches you truth. How do I know it's truth? Because it stings the flesh. You know something is truth when it stings your tradition. Amen. So anyway, grab some CDs. There's, uh, that's not all we have, but it is quite a bit of stuff. I was counting for Pastor Shelley. And she says, you have a deal. And I, I counted it all up. If you bought one of everything, it would be $285. But if you want one of everything, it's $200. That saves you $85. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. And that may take the election thing away from some of you, but uh, <laughs> we're just here to help. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, let's get right into this. They're paying me by the hour, so I'm going to milk this sucker as long as I can go. Is that all right? 
<laughs> I'm just kidding with you. All right, let's go over to the book of Acts, the 13th chapter. Tell somebody that's going to be good. It's going to be good. Acts, the 13th chapter. Oh, I should have told you. You can write a check for anything. Cash is good. Visa, MasterCard, Discover, American Express, whatever you can do. It's a blessing. I did bring my billfold this time. Last time I came here, I left my billfold in the other truck, and I needed gas to get home. So you bought CDs because you felt sorry for me, I guess. I got to come up with another excuse now. I did. It is. Christmas is coming. How much that set you back for? Amen. <laughs> oh, come on. Let's have fun tonight. Acts 13. Let's start in the 21st verse. And afterward, they... Somebody say Israel. I'm reading from the New King Jimmy. Which one of y'all use it? Oh, that's fine. We're going to go beyond it anyway. Watch this. So God gave them Saul, the son of Kish, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, for 40 years. How many has asked for a blessing and you ended up with a trial? <laughs> because anytime you act, somebody's needing to hear this. Anytime you pray for something selfishly to make you happy, it can end up being a trial. Because self always wants to get out of God's timing. Mm. Well, aren't you glad we're not going there? Amen? Come on, brother. <laughs> 22nd verse. And when he had removed him, he raised up for them David as king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, who will do all my will. Amen. The conference this weekend is about the heart of God. What is the heart of God? The heart of God, by definition, is simply the character of God's goodness Amen. expressed by the state of man's rest. Okay. I'll say it again. The heart of God. We say, well, Jesus came into my heart. Your heart in the Scripture is your consciousness. So when you say Jesus came into my heart, you're saying I have let Him come into my thoughts. Okay? Because if you go back and study the fall in the book of Genesis, man's spirit didn't fall. Mm. His mind did. Right. Yeah, that's right. yeah. See, if his spirit had fallen, he wouldn't have had to have been kicked out of the garden. But because you don't think right, you just don't think you're deserving. Amen. Yeah, baby girl. You all, oh, baby boy, I'm sorry. <laughs> years he'll be taller than me anyway now. that's it y'all make some good looking babies Tori you need to keep going dog I'll guarantee you that but he said I found a, a, a man after my own heart so when you say well I'm saved you're saying I'm allowing what he did as man's sacrifice to come into my conscious thinking. Yeah. See, Paul referred to it. It is your soul that gets saved. Okay. It's not your spirit. It's your soul that gets saved. So what's what needs saving? The soul. The mind. So what can go to heaven or hell on earth? The mind. The mind. But if you can find the heart of God, you can go through anything and be all right. Yeah. How many is ready to grow? Yeah. What's this? 
Let's go over to the book of Hebrews, the fourth chapter, and I'm going to say it again. The heart of God, somebody say the heart of God, the heart of God. is simply the character of God and His goodness expressed in my state of rest. So you know I have found the heart of God when I'm at rest in a struggle. And everybody here, we're going to go through things. Some people teach, oh, you start living right and quit doing this, start doing this, and you won't have a problem. Well, hello. You're going to go through some stuff. But the question is, are you running to your answer or are you running to the heart? Because spiritual warfare is not helmets, swords, and breastplates. Spirit, and I'm going to smoke a holy cow Come on, for man. people that love spiritual warfare. Yeah. Come on. Your greatest armor in spiritual warfare is laying on a beach letting God do His thing. Hallelujah. Amen. And not worrying about it. Amen. It's so good. Somebody say the heart of God, heart of God. is to trust Him. Hebrews, the fourth chapter. Let's look at the first verse, and I'll read a few verses here. Hebrews 4 1. How many's going through some stuff tonight? All you need, you don't need an answer. You need the heart of God. Because the heart of God is the answer. Because when you entered his heart, you entered his trust. Wow. Your problem cannot end until you give up your worry. How do I know I'm worrying about it? Because you're still praying about it, Edna. <laughs> Prayer is proof you have not heard His voice. You only pray till you hear His voice. And once you pray about it and He speaks to you, let it go. And you hear this, well, God woke me up at 2 o'clock in the morning and prayed about it again. That wasn't God that woke you up. He already talked to you. That was your ego saying, I'm not getting my way, so maybe I can manipulate Him with my lack of sleep. Wow. <laughs> We're coming back Saturday. Amen. <laughs> well, I am. Yeah. <laughs> well, I won't be here. All right, what's this? Now, and please don't be offended if, if you go to a church that... I believe in prayer. I just believe you pray until you hear. And once you hear, now the battle is to trust. Yes. Yeah. Man, yeah. 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 We wow. use prayer and fasting to manipulate God's time to satisfy our ego. Yes. Come on. Mm. Amen. Hmm. Okay. Hebrews 4, the first verse. Somebody say, this is the heart of God. Therefore, since a promise remains of entering His rest, that's the heart of God right there. Amen. His rest. Amen. Therefore, since a promise remains of entering His rest, let us pay attention. Fear is an old English word. It doesn't pertain to our understanding. So the translation is, let us pay attention to this. Lest any of you seem to have come short of it. Oh, for we have all fallen short of the glory. That doesn't mean you've fallen short of being accepted. Come on. It means you have come short of trusting in your struggle. Amen. That's what it means. Y'all still glad you came? Say another one. Well, no. <laughs> What's that? This is going to help you. What? <laughs> For indeed, the gospel, somebody say the good news. good news. Now, what is the good news? Jesus died as man, was buried as man, and was raised as man. Yeah. That's the gospel. Yeah. The good news is not He's coming back to get you. The good news, He already took care of you. Yeah. Do you realize oh. the Father... In, do you remember Luke 15, the prodigal son? How many was raised in church? 
Welcome to rehab tonight. Amen? Because in Luke 15, the prodigal son, we've always talked about, oh, it's a believer coming back home. Do you realize the father never chased after the prodigal? Why? Because he never stopped being his son. He lost his mind, not his relationship. He t- tell your neighbor, don't lose your mind. So what's this? We're going to go through stuff in life, but our goal is to find his heart without losing our mind. That is so good. Wow. Is this okay, Mark? Yes. Watch. What's this? Third verse. For we who have believed do enter that rest, as he said, so I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest, although the works were, were finished from the foundation of the world. For he has spoken in a certain place of the seventh day in this way, and God rested on the seventh day from all his works. And again in this place they shall not enter my rest. Even though the works are finished, some people still live anxious. They don't rest. Look at me. You do not have a devil problem. Now, we need to understand that. We love to blame the devil. But we do not have a devil problem. How do you know? Because Jesus destroyed the works of the devil. Right. Right. So we have no one to blame except our ego demanding our way when we want it, how we want it, and if we don't get it that way, we're not going to be happy. Now, I'm a preacher's kid, and I know how this stuff goes. Right before church time. Yeah, Pastor Mark. Yeah, it's me. No, no, I'm not going to be there. No, I've had some things come up. No, I was just calling to have y'all pray for me. Yeah. Well, I don't know when I'll be back. Probably when I get my way. Come on. Now, if you've done that, just laugh. Nobody will know except Pastor Mark. But you see how ego takes over. Because ego says, I can get happiness out of my own heart. Wow. But Christianity says, I've got to enter His rest. Therefore, there remains a rest for the people of God. Fourth verse. For he has spoken in a certain place of the seventh day of this way, and God rested on the seventh day from all his works. And again, in this place they shall not enter my rest. Sixth verse. Since there, therefore it remains that some must enter it. Somebody say it's not an option. <laughs> Can I retranslate that? You cannot substitute a prayer line and anointing oil for the renewal of your mind. <laughs> We live in a lazy society. They don't want to think right. They don't want to be faithful. They don't want to enter into ministry that the church has going out into the community. But by God, when they have a problem, they want somebody to hold them up in prayer. And God says, you've got to enter my rest. So you don't have a devil problem. We have a will problem. I'm being good tonight. Amen. That's it. I'm glad my toes are getting sore over here. Well, I'll hold you up, brother. Have you seen Best him? Yes, I can. You just can. That's it. Six verses. Since therefore it remains that some must enter it, and those to whom it was first preached did not enter it because of disobedience. Somebody say disobedience. Disobedience. Now, I was raised in classical Pentecost. I know what I'm talking about. Disobedience was going to the movies. Disobedience was dipping stuff. Disobedience was scooting a boot. Disobedience was anything. Now, I was raised very legalistic. I love my parents. That was the understanding they had. 
And I thank God I was raised in a Christian home. Don't get me wrong. But I'm also understanding. I thank God I'm, I'm gaining a little more knowledge now. Disobedience is not doing something wrong. Disobedience is not trusting Him. Amen. 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 Worry is a greater sin than anything you could do in the natural. Because worry is proof disobedience is ego driven. Well, I don't even know what I said. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm asking you, man. What's this? Wor Somebody say worry. worry. What is worry? Worry is proof you don't trust God. Yeah. yeah. And worry yeah, yeah. is a greater sin. Do you remember when Jesus prayed the Lord's Prayer? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your authority. Your kingdom come, your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. What day? The day your will is done on earth as it is in heaven. And lead us not into temptation. And let no man say when he's tempted, he was tempted by God. What is the only temptation of the believer in the New Testament? To not trust. Come on. See, temptation is not going to the casino, not doing this, not doing that. Temptation is to worry about what you're going through. Yeah. Man. So let no man say when he's tempted, he was tempted by God because God will never allow you to go through something that He requires you to worry about it. Amen. So until we find rest, we have not found the heart of God. This is good. Okay. Of course... I'm just saying that for my own benefit right now, but what's, <laughs> we're going to get to. The tenth verse, or ninth verse. There remains therefore a rest. Somebody say heart. 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 The word heart means consciousness. The place of rest is the place where you live in the mind of Christ. Amen. You think about you the way he thinks about him. Yeah. Mm. There remains, therefore, a rest for the people of God. For he who has... What's this? Mark, how do I know I'm walking in the heart of God? He who has entered his heart, entered his rest, has himself also ceased from his works as God did from his. What is the work of the flesh? is to do things out of anxiety, stress, and worry to manipulate God's hand. Yeah. Wow. When you stop worrying about it, you have entered the heart of God. I've got to get into this. What's this? We have sadly misconstrued the implied meaning of the heart of God. Indulge me just a moment. I... I studied this out today. As being someone who never does wrong, never messes up, and is never tempted to do wrong. That's not the heart of God. The heart of God is when you enter a place that says, Father, I know you love me no matter what, and what I'm going through, I just want to reveal you. I don't want to worry about me. Paul said, be anxious for nothing but in everything through prayer and supplication. Amen. Why do you pray and supplicate during a struggle? So you can hear from God. And once you hear from God, you don't worry about it anymore. Why do you, some of you right here tonight, you're still praying about stuff. God has already spoken to you. It's going to be okay. Well, how long is it going to take? How long is it going to take you to give up your ego trying to move God with your prayer? Wow. Amen. Hello. Ego is the only giant in the land of the New Testament. Amen. Amen. The heart of God is this. 
It denotes a person's center for both physical and emotional, intellectual, moral activities. Sometimes, referring to the heart of God, it is used figuratively for any inaccessible thing. Why? Because your heart is hidden. Your heart and your lungs. Your motive and your passion are protected by your ribcage. Mm. Oh, this is going to be good. (laughs) The heart as the center of physical activity is this. The heart denotes to both the ancient and modern people the beating chest organ protected by the rib cage. Ancient people, however understood the heart's physical function differently than we do today. From their viewpoint, the heart was the central organ that moved the rest of the body. Hmm. Yeah, so if my works do not reflect my faith, it's because my heart has not entered His rest. Hmm. Wow. See, we have a bad problem with grace people. Well, I'm saved. I don't need to go to church. I don't need to pay my tithe. No, your heart's not right. Right. Uh, come on. Is that too straight? No. But that's, it doesn't mean God doesn't. Of course you're accepted. But He ain't going to run to the pig pen to pull you out. And the prodigal son arose and said, Why am I living in this place when I can be living in the place of rest? Some of you tonight are going to start waking up over this weekend saying, I will arise and I will say to my Father, Father, forgive me. And when you start confessing your sin, God's going to ignore you. Because He says, I never even saw it as sin. I saw you as being selfishly egotistical, saying, i got to have my way to be happy. Well, let's talk about the heart of God. (laughs) Ancient people understood the heart's physical function differently than what we do, the moderns do today. From their viewpoint, the heart was the central organ that moved the rest of the body. Ancients ate to strengthen their heart and revive their body. See, we have people today that want to eat Big Macs and Quarter Pounders and then go to Planet Fitness. (laughs) Now, you eat whatever you want to, amen? You you eat whatever you want to. But I'm saying, in the old world, they knew their heart was the main muscle of their life and they ate to strengthen their heart. Because if your heart is strong, your body's going to be strong. Right, Right. Yeah. Stay right with me. This is going to go deeper. Is that okay? Even Abraham offered his weary guest food so that they might sustain their hearts and then go on their way. You can find that in Genesis 18, the fifth verse. God... We can't go that deep. Let me skip to the next one. The heart as... uh, Yeah, I think I will. (laughs) Somebody say a rib. rib. And God created woman. Mm -hmm. Well, He took the rib of a man. We've always thought that literal physical rib. No. The Hebrew words mean He took her from His side. The word was translated rib, but it's not talking about a rib. When they pierced Jesus on the cross, the blood and the water flowed out of His side, not His rib. When they carried the ark, they put a staff on each side. And when they put the Mosaic law, they didn't put... They didn't put the Mosaic Law in the tabernacle, in the Ark of the Covenant. They put it on the side. Now, why was the woman created? To be the consciousness of man. (laughs) 
Come on. The woman, somebody say suke. That's the Hebraic word. The suke of Numa. Man is the spirit. Woman is the suke. So my spirit is right with God. But my mind likes to talk me into some things. That's the reason Adam legitimately said at the fall, it was that woman you gave me. And in other words, if I, had, I wouldn't have fallen unless I would have been tempted with the thought. Now, females, don't get upset. This is all spiritual, okay? Right. Right. If you're a brawl burner, don't, don't get mad at me. I'm, I, I'm not talking about chauvinistic things. What I'm saying is, each one of us have a mind and a spirit. We have this woman that wants to go by what she sees. It looks good. She's sensing it ought to taste good. But I've got this spirit that's standing back yeah. saying, let my mind rule me. Adam screwed up when he let his mind run with him. Yeah. You hear me? Yeah. And even today. So, what's this? Man was taken or woman was taken from his side. Mm -hmm. In other words, my mind is equal to my spirit. Mm -hmm. Because woman was not taken from man's foot to be tread upon. She was taken from his side to be equal to. So where do you think the throne of... Who is God? Is Christ in you? Is, Christ, is Jesus seated at the right hand of the Father? Where is Jesus? In us. So our spirit is the presence of the Father. But our woman is the throne He sets on. So until you can control your thoughts in a struggle, well, we need enough time for that. Let me keep going into this. The heart as the center of hidden emotional, intellectual, moral activity the Word describes it this way. Somebody say the heart. the heart. And all we're trying to do this weekend is find the heart of God. Yeah. And the heart of God is right there. It's not like you've got to call on it. You have to enter it. Yeah. Mm. You have to enter it. It's not something a prayer line is going to give you. You've got to make a decision. I'm going to start thinking this way. Yeah. Some of you here tonight has been going through some stuff you keep praying for, fasting for, sowing seed over. Why don't you just give it up and let God be God and yeah. say, I'm not going to worry about this anymore. And you know what the Father's going to say? Whew, I am glad you did that because I'm not going to share my glory with you while you're worrying. Amen. 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 Man looks on the outward appearance, said Samuel, but the Lord looks on the heart. 1 Samuel 16, 7. What's this? There remains a rest. Somebody say rest. 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 So the only thing about me that isn't at rest in a struggle is my woman. Hmm. My mind. My mind's what produces worry. And worry is proof ego is in charge. Mm -hmm. So you don't have a devil problem, you've got an ego problem. You've got to have your way to be happy. So what's this? How many has ever heard of sleep apnea? Yeah. Sleep apnea, the signs of it are snoring. You wake up as tired as when you went to bed. You wake up trying to catch your breath. Some people, apnea, somebody say apnea. apnea. Sleep apnea is diagnosed as this. How many times do you stop breathing while you're sleeping? If you stop breathing more than 10 seconds, it is called apnea. Stopping breathing is proof 
There is no oxygen getting to your brain. Sleep apnea, first in the natural, then the spiritual. Sleep apnea has been proven medically that it is the main producer of Alzheimer's, dementia, strokes, hypertension, and heart disease. (coughs) But there remains therefore a rest. You cannot truly... You can sleep at night in the natural, but if you have sleep apnea, you're not resting. Yes, right. Right. You can. And some of you know what I'm talking about. You can go to bed and sleep for hours, but you wake up as tired as when you went to bed. Amen. That's apnea. But there is also a spiritual apnea. Yeah. Okay. Come on. You can go to church and do the works, but if you're still worried, you're not resting. Oh my God. The answer for sleep apnea is this. They do one of two things. They will give you a mouthpiece that moves your lower jaw forward so that when you do sleep, your airways are still open. The only problem with that, that only really cures the snoring. What they have discovered in medical science is you need a CPAP machine. A CPAP machine is simply oxygen forced through your nasal cavities or as a mask over your nose and mouth that no matter what happens during the night, God, get it in them. It doesn't matter what happens during the night. As long as you've got some oxygen flowing, you're going to be at rest. Yeah. And God breathed into the nostrils. Yeah. And God breathed. I got chicken skin just thinking about it. And God breathed into the nostrils of man. Yeah. Yeah. That is what. Somebody say CPAP. That's what your Holy Ghost prayer language is. It is your CPAP in the Spirit. Because when I feel like I can't sleep through this, I can't rest through this, look at what I'm going through. I'm choking. It looks bigger than... What am I doing? I am entering His rest. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It is one thing to sleep. It is another thing to rest. Yeah. So your knee is bothering you. Come here. I call you whole. I call you healed. Everything I've been through with my knees, I didn't go through that hell for nothing. I call you what I say you are. You are healed, whole. Your meniscus, your cartilage. What that did not do, I command restoration. You hear me? You're going to be glad you came tonight, Bubba. Because I know what knee pain is. I had two osteotomies. I know what it is. You're good. So you enter His rest by praying in the Spirit. Amen. Hello? Well, I don't need that prayer language. So, how many of you women have a spouse that snores? Oh. Mm. Isn't it amazing? The snoring doesn't bother the one that's doing it. It only pesters the one that's not. I'm going to be very blunt with you. Your pessimism 
is wearing people out. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Your need and prayer for every little thing is wearing people out. Yeah. Because your anxiety is a snore of disturbance to the one at rest. Oh my gosh, come on, man. Woo! <laughs> well, let's just keep moving. Right. Sing another song, brother. What's this? Oh, this is good. I've got ten more pages of it. Somebody say, I'm going to enter his heart. So to enter the heart of the Lord is the rest of God. How do I enter his rest? Don't fear. Right. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry. Well, what if I still do it? Welcome to hell, baby. Do you realize hell in the scripture is the worry of man's ego? <laughs> I'll say it again. Hell in the Scripture is not a place of flames. It is the worry of man's ego demanding his way to be happy. Is it okay to go here? Luke the 16th chapter. What's this? I'm going to prove it to you. Luke 16. I used to use this passage on a Sunday morning for altar calls. <laughs> I know I did, seriously. I think <laughs> I'm a recovering religious person, amen? I should have started the service with, Hi, my name is Mark. <laughs> but what's this? Luke 16. Somebody say rest. rest. So I can only rest when I don't worry. So how do I not worry? Pray in the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you're here tonight and you've never used your prayer language, you need to. Amen. Well, I don't need that. Well, your snoring is bothering me. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Some people, you just want to tell them, oh my God, get over yourself. Right. right. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You can't do that because we walk in love. Amen? <laughs> but there's just, there's just some people you just yes. want to tell them. You know what? I love you, but I don't even know if I like you anymore. Because <laughs> you just bring me down every time I see you. Come on, come on. It's always about what's going wrong. Come you remember on. Hee Haw? So I'm dating myself now. You remember that program? Her theme song? Gloom, despair, and agony on me. Oh, deep, dark depression, excessive misery. Oh, if it weren't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Gloom, despair, and agony on me. Now all you need is a hound dog to pet. Amen. <laughs> That's the reason they say dogs are good for depressed people. <laughs> are you sure you're glad you came? <laughs> okay, now I know this can be corrected. I know it can. And and I've lo I've even apologized at this house if I was ever critical before. I, I'm growing, everybody is. <laughs> But I'm still not going to stop telling you the truth. And the truth is, your problem is not your diagnosis. Your problem is your worry. Because God will not touch what you've got your hand on. Mm. All right, Luke 16. So, somebody say worry, worry. is proof. proof I'm not resting. If I'm not resting, I haven't found the heart of God. If I'm not in the heart of God, then I'm in hell. I'll prove it to you right here. Luke, the 16th chapter, the 19th verse. I don't know how long I've been going. Keep going, oh. bro. Yeah. Luke 16, 19. There was a certain man, somebody say a certain rich man. Now, in the Gospels, it's still Old Testament, so it's typology and parallelism. Okay? 
certain rich man was speaking of Judah because the Israels were the rich people in the Scripture. Amen. Somebody say rich. rich. The word rich doesn't mean just monetarily. It means they were the ones that were favored by God. A rich person today is a person who believes they deserve God's goodness based on their works. Okay. There was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. What's it mean they fared sumptuously every day? Now understand, this is a parable. This is not a literal story. This is a parable. A parable is a natural analogy producing a spiritual understanding. So here were these people that said, well, I go to church all the time. I pay my tithe. I've never smoked. I've never drank. I've never been divorced. I've never done this. I'm, so I fare sumptuously. Okay. That's what it means. But there was a certain beggar named Lazarus. Somebody say Lazarus. Lazarus. Lazarus's name means one whom God helps. Lazarus was a Gentile. Gentiles were not allowed in the presence of the temple. Only those who were Jews. If you weren't a Jew... You had no right. And even the Jews of that day. You can, I'm not being anti-Semitic. I'm just giving you historical value. The Jews of that day thought of people, especially the Samaritans, they thought they were dogs. If you don't live the way I do and walk in my conviction, convictions, you have no right to my blessings. And, and that's what we're reading about, okay? Okay. There was a certain beggar named Lazarus, full of sores, who was laid at his gate, designed to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. So it was that the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. Hmm. One man got buried in his problems. And the other man went to Abraham's bosom. Somebody say Abraham's bosom. Abraham. Now, the Jews understood this parable. That's the reason when Jesus finished teaching it, it hacked them off. Because Abraham's bosom to them was paradise. The place where you go instead of Sheol. Sheol was the waiting place of the believers who were waiting on a Messiah to come. Paradise was Abraham's bosom. It was the place of rest in tumultuous times. Let's just call it the heart of God. Oh my God. The place to go in tumultuous times. The rich man died and did not go to rest. He was buried in his problem, but conscious of his outcome. Now, I'm going to smoke what we used to teach out of this because we've used this to just scare people with hell. And it's... it's not what it's talking about. You believe about hell what you want to, but that's not what it's talking about here. So it was when the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom, the rich man died and was buried. And being in torments in hell, he, somebody say the rich man, the rich man. lifted up his eyes. Hmm. And being in torments, somebody say torments. torments. You ever looked up the original language of the English word torments? Basanos. Basanos. Let's learn something tonight. Somebody say Bassanos. Bassanos. Bassanos, to be tormented, means to be rubbed like metal to see what you've got in you. Hell is not where you go after you die. It's where you go when you don't trust God. You will go through a place you're thinking, God, I don't know how much more... You're just getting rubbed, baby. 
It's called in the Old Testament being tried by fire. Hmm. I've been through hell. Amen. Some of you right here tonight may be going through something. It's just rubbing you. And you're tormented. You can only be tormented till you trust. Mm. Mm. Hell will never be hotter than your faith. Because He promised I'll always provide a way of escape. Yeah. This is good, Tori. Good. I'm telling you, some of us right here tonight, you, you and I may be going through something, you feel like you're being rubbed. But the question is, what's this? Am I a rich man in it? Or am I in the bosom of Abraham at rest? Are you recalling to God everything you've done right? Mm in your struggle. Are you reminding Him how faithful you've been? Are you reminding Him how many things you've quit doing? <laughs> See, hell is proof. Thank you, Lord. Confession of sin is proof you're going through hell. Amen. Now I'll just let you chew on that one for a little bit. Watch this. 24th verse. Then he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I am tormented in what? What? Come on now. In what? Is that plural? Flame? No, there's only one flame. See, we've always taught the flames plural of hell. Hmm. Hmm. Somebody say flame. flame. That word means mental anguish, not physical pain. That smokes a lot of stuff we were taught. If you've ever been through something in life, you wondered, God, where did you go? You've been to hell. Yeah. Wow. If you've ever had kids that didn't start, they, they just went out on their own, like the prodigal son, you say, Mark, I raised them right, but they're off doing this stuff. Welcome to hell. Well, what do I need to do? Just like the father did. He just stayed at the house. And trust the Spirit that He's going to wake them up. For we shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. And I will arise and say to my Father, Father, forgive me. And He's going to ignore you and say, Son, I never stopped forgiving you. You were always forgiven. You just needed to go find. You didn't like living in hell. And you should have stayed in the place of trust. The heart of God is found when a person trusts God in spite of what they're going through. Yes. Wow. That's the heart of God. If you're going through something tonight, let me encourage you. Is that all right? He will not leave your soul in hell. <laughs> He's not going to. You may be here tonight saying, "Oh, Mark, I'm going through some hell, and I'm, I'm going through mental anguish. I'm being rubbed and tried." But He will not leave you there. Praise God, Lord. So it was the rich man, the Jew of that day, who thought we're so favored by God. We rely on our works. And he's the one that was rubbed wrong. But the one who said, God, I have messed up my life. I've done things. I'm sick of repenting over them. I'm sick of confessing them to you. And he died. What's it mean he died and went to the bosom? It means he died to his ego because he had nothing to claim. Just His goodness. Wow. Amen. Y'all still okay? Y'all got sad when I started talking about hell. I don't know. 
Well, I was hoping it was hot and fiery. Well, I, you believe hear me. You believe whatever you want to. I'm I'm just giving you a study here. Hmm. Luke 16, 27 to 28. The fact the rich man... Did, look at the 27th verse. Then he, the rich man said, Then he said, I beg you therefore, Father, that you would send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may testify to them, lest they also come to this place of torment. And Abraham said to him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear him. And he said, No, Father Abraham, but if one goes to them from the dead, they will repent. But he said to him, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rise from the dead. Can I retranslate that? Yes, if you don't understand the Old Testament was only to tell you the value of your life, then how can you just read the New Testament and appreciate what He did for you? Amen. Amen. See, a lot of my grace friends, we don't even need the Old Testament. Of course you do. Yeah. The Old Testament is the price tag that was paid for us. Amen. Yes. What's this? i got to quit. The heart of God is to live each day in a place of resting at peace no matter what you go through. Somebody say the heart. the heart. So you have found the heart of God when you refuse to worry. And when things do go wrong, you don't start bringing up what you've done right. <laughs> then you found His rest. Wow. Yeah, I've got, to, I've got to quit with this. Hebrews 4.11 And then I'm done. Everybody okay? Yeah. Are you sure? <laughs> Hebrews 4.11 Let us labor. How many people love that? Oh, what you do? <laughs> I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights. <laughs> New heights I'm paying every day. <laughs> All we see is the word labor. <laughs> well, you know, and that's all we knew. Hear me. I'm glad I can laugh about it now. But I thought this way. It's just this hang in there, little creeper. Jesus is coming. <laughs> little soldier. <laughs> Tighten them boots and hang on because Jesus is coming. But what does it say? Let us labor to do what? To enter. Oh, it doesn't say labor to make him happy. Come on. Your I'm gonna smoke a cow. The only battle we have in life is to enter his rest. Yeah. 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 You're not fighting diabetes, cancer, multiple dystrophy, muscular sclerosis. You're not fighting anything like that. The only thing you're fighting is wow. to trust Him because yeah. you can't see it, hear it, or feel it. But yet, will I trust in the Lord? You have just found the heart of God. And guess what? The ancients of old said, if you can get the heart healthy... The rest of the body is. Yeah. Wow. Wow. If you can get your trust in Him, then the rest of you is going to be okay. Amen. Father, thank You for Your Word. Thank You that You gave us Jesus so we could enter that rest. And Father, the only struggle I have is this woman You gave me. It's this mind that I have that's telling me the doctor didn't say that. It's telling me the banker didn't say that. It's telling me society's not saying that. But your word says, I am the Lord that heals you. Your word says, I've got your whole family taken care of. Father, tonight, my only labor, I'm not getting in a prayer line for sickness. I'm getting in a prayer line to say, God, I am casting all my care on you because I know you care for me and I'm going to enter that rest. Yes. 
Father, I'm tired of the hell I'm going through trying to prove my goodness to determine your gratification. I'm done with it. Tonight, I just want to say, Lord, I'm turning my church over to You. I'm turning my family over to You. I'm turning my job over to You. I'm turning my life over to You. Father, I'm going to walk with You and serve You, and I know there's going to be times that darkness surrounds me. But when I die to myself, I will go to the bosom of Abraham and rest. I've died before in my problem and went to the hell and anguish of what I'm going through. So tonight, I choose to start. How many's got some stuff you say, Mark, I think I'm just going to give it up and let God take it. Show me a hand. Stand to your feet if that's you. I want you to come up here to me. Is this okay, Pastor Mark? And I'm done. i got to go back home tonight. Those of you that you say, Mark, i got some stuff. I'm just going to die to it tonight. And I'm going to say, you know what? I'm tired of trying to figure it out. Lord, you can have it. I want you to come up here to me. Come up here to me. I believe in praying for people. Some people think the way I teach, oh, you don't believe in praying. I, yes, I do. Well, why do I have to come forward? Because you're making a public statement. You will never hear me complain about this again. I gave it to God November the 10th, 2016. I gave it to God. Kelly, would you all mind playing some music? Is 